Todd Howard, once a celebrated whiz kid and the brain behind some of the most iconic role-playing games, now has a new nickname. Todd the Liar. From being hailed as a gaming genius to becoming the most memed on man in the gaming community, it's been one hell of a journey for him. Lofty dreams, questionable marketing antics, and the infamous Fallout 76 launch. It's all been a part of his exhilarating ride, which completely turned the gaming community's perception of him upside down. So you might be wondering, what on earth happened? Well, that's exactly what we're about to discuss in today's video. We're going to dive headfirst into Todd's tale, from his promising start at Bethesda to his current situation as one of gaming's biggest controversies. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's dive into the world of Todd Howard. And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is all of this just works. Now to truly understand this story, we need to take a trip down memory lane, back to Todd Howard's early days. Todd was a computer and video game fanatic from an early age, drawing inspiration from 80s classics like Wizardry and Ultima 3 Exodus. Todd always dreamed of making video games, but his aspirations were the source of mockery among his peers. I was writing games when I was, you know, 12, whatever, and uh, the other kids in the block would say, you know, I'm gonna play quarterback for the Cowboys, and I'd be like, I'm gonna make video games and everyone's gonna play them. Like, you dork, go back to the chess club. Who's laughing now? Yes, I was in the chess club. While he was in school, Todd had a routine. He passed by Bethesda's offices every day, so one day he decided to drop in and shoot his shot, applying for a job there. But he was immediately rejected. He was still in school, after all. Little did they know that this passionate young man would become one of the most talked about figures in the gaming industry. Determined, Todd knocked on Bethesda's doors again after graduation, only to find no open positions. But he didn't let that stop him. Rather than give up on his dreams, Howard took a job with a smaller game developer in Yorktown, Virginia, just so he could mingle at events like CES and maybe catch Bethesda's eye. And guess what? His patience paid off. In 1994, Todd was hired as a producer at Bethesda Softworks. His first projects included The Terminator, Future Shock, Skynet, and The Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall, where he showcased his design prowess. After building a strong foundation with these successes, Howard was ready for bigger things. In 1998, he got the opportunity he'd been waiting for, taking the helm as the project lead on The Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard. This was a significant stepping stone in his career, marking his transition into a leadership role. But this was just the beginning. With a taste of success and leadership under his belt, Howard was poised for even greater accomplishments. Little did he know, he was on the cusp of what many would later call his golden age. The golden age of Todd Howard kicked off with the astonishing success of Morrowind, a triumph that wasn't just a personal victory for Howard, but a game changer for Bethesda Softworks. This period was marked by an impressive succession of releases that included Oblivion, Fallout 3, and the now iconic Skyrim. Each game was not only a commercial hit, but also an innovative step forward in the RPG genre, pushing the boundaries of immersive storytelling and expansive world building. Each title that emerged from Bethesda under his leadership had its own unique charm and distinct flavor. The open world environments of these games didn't just offer a broad canvas for players to roam around. They were colossal playgrounds teeming with life intricacies, and a multitude of mysteries awaiting discovery. Every corner of these worlds was filled with secrets and stories, providing gamers with an experience that went far beyond the traditional confines of gameplay. It was like stepping into another realm, a reality where they could lose themselves in the profound depth of the narratives and the intricacies of the gameplay mechanics. It's almost like two things sitting on top of each other. Here's the game, and then here's the, here's the virtual world. The sense of freedom and choice these games offered was something gamers had never seen before at the time. It wasn't just about playing a game anymore. It was about living a fantasy life with these meticulously crafted worlds. And the mastermind behind all this innovation, this groundbreaking transformation of the gaming landscape, was none other than Todd Howard himself. This was the era where he truly came into his own, commanding the spotlight with his visionary ideas and relentless drive. His impact on Bethesda was transformative, 
taking it from a small but well-respected studio to a AAA trendsetter that pushed the boundaries of what was possible in video games. But his influence extended far beyond the walls of Bethesda. The entire RPG genre felt the ripple effects of his innovative design and storytelling approach. Given the success Bethesda was seeing under Todd Howard, it wasn't long before BioWare, Ubisoft, and CD Projekt Red were all creating massive open-world RPGs of their own. In short, this was the era when Todd Howard became a titan in the gaming industry, a visionary who didn't just follow trends, but set them. The gaming world was forever changed by his contributions, and this golden age marked his ascension as a true legend in the field. And yet, despite the golden age of innovation and groundbreaking game design, a shadow began to creep over Howard's glowing reputation. It was during these years of skyrocketing success that a trend started to emerge, a pattern that would soon become all too familiar to the gaming community. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. The titan of the gaming industry, lauded for his visionary approach, was beginning to display a penchant for promises that didn't quite match up to reality. You see, Howard had a way with words, and a charisma that shone brightly whenever he took the stage to unveil his latest masterpiece. His excitement was contagious, and his energy was palpable. He would weave tales of unimaginable adventures and revolutionary gameplay mechanics, hyping up his upcoming games as if they were the messiahs of the gaming world. And we believed him at the time. Why wouldn't we? After all, this was the man who had brought us into the immersive universes and redefined the RPG genre. So we hung on to his every word, eagerly waiting for the promised gaming nirvana. But then came the horse armor DLC in Oblivion, and the cracks in the facade began to show. Not exactly the revolutionary content we'd come to expect, huh? It was the first of many such instances where reality didn't quite match up to Howard's promises, where the dream he sold us didn't materialize in the way we had hoped. But hey, everyone makes mistakes. Maybe he just got a bit carried away. Except that it happened again. Howard told us about quote-unquote infinite quests in Skyrim. It sounded amazing, right? In reality, these were just procedurally generated fetch quests where a random NPC would ask us to fetch a random item from a random location. Then he's telling us that Fallout 3 will have 200 endings. So as of last week, we're over 200 endings. That is not an exaggeration. That was a bit of a stretch too. Howard's repeated exaggerations in marketing promos led to the creation of the Sweet Little Lies meme format, where memers would pair Howard's statements with the song Little Lies by Fleetwood Mac. These NPCs are not scripted. In 2015, Bethesda released Fallout 4, and with it, a swarm of bugs. Despite Howard's famous line, it just works, there were a lot of problems with this game. It had a plethora of bugs at launch, and many features that classic Fallout fans hoped for were noticeably absent from the game. That quote ended up as a meme, further denting Howard's credibility. Things came to a head in 2017, when Howard's Wikipedia page was vandalized by a torrent of rogue edits. One of the most memorable defacements has to be the addition on the entry for Wayne Gretzky Hockey, where a prankster wrote about Howard, claiming he was about to release Wayne Gretzky Skyrim, and then, quote, proceed to devour the earth, snuffing out humanity like a candle, as prophesied in the ancient texts. Things got so bad that Wikipedia had to lock down his page to prevent further random nonsense from getting added to Howard's biography. It was like the gaming community was sending a message loud and clear. We're not buying your sweet little lies anymore, Todd. Howard's been in the crosshairs of a lot of jokes, too. Bethesda's habit of re-releasing Skyrim on every console imaginable, Howard's no-show at E3 one year, which earned him the nickname Todd Coward, and the list goes on. What all this boils down to is a growing sense of frustration among gamers. They feel lied to, disappointed, and let down by Howard's Progen promises. It's a classic case of actions speaking louder than words. You can hype up your games all you want, but at the end of the day, they need to deliver. And for many gamers, Howard's more recent games just haven't lived up to the hype. But the worst was yet to come. But there is one big difference with this game. It's that each of those characters 
is a real person. In 2018, Bethesda was trying to do something new and big with their Fallout franchise, and they brought Todd Howard up on stage at E3 to sell it. Howard stood there and claimed that Fallout 76 would be five times the size and have 16 times the detail of Fallout 4. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. And that wasn't all. He promised us a multiplayer experience like no other, something revolutionary. He made it sound like the game of the century, and we all bought into it at first. But then the game dropped. And let me tell you, it was nothing like Howard promised. It was a complete and utter mess. There were performance issues, game-breaking bugs, server problems, you name it. It felt like they released an unfinished game and expected us to just roll with it. And the world? It was empty. No NPCs and no real storyline. It was like wandering around in a post-apocalyptic wasteland with nothing to do. The backlash was pretty severe. Critics and players alike were unhappy, and rightfully so. This was the point where Todd became the most hated man in gaming. But here's the kicker. The controversy didn't stop with the game. They had this collector's edition where they promised a canvas bag. Sounds cool, right? Except they delivered a cheaper nylon one instead. It's like adding insult to injury. Bethesda's solution? They offered in-game currency as compensation, as if that's going to fix everything. It just added more fuel to the fire. Overall, Fallout 76 was a disaster, and Todd Howard was at the center of it all. His extravagant promises and the reality of the game were worlds apart. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. After Fallout 76's colossal mess, Todd Howard, the big man at Bethesda, was in the thick of it. The gaming community was not just unhappy, they were furious. All those grand promises Howard made at E3, they all came back to bite him in the ass. He found himself the main villain in the whole Fallout 76 saga, but they didn't just pack it up and call it a day. No, Howard and his team at Bethesda rolled up their sleeves and got to work. Howard even came out in a few interviews, admitting that they knew Fallout 76 wasn't all sunshine and rainbows at launch. He confessed that they messed up, which is more than you can say for some folks in the industry, like Electronic Arts. Bethesda has made some big efforts trying to patch up Fallout 76. They rolled out some hefty updates and made quite a few changes to the game. They even put NPCs in the game and fresh storylines in the Wastelanders update. It was their way of saying, hey, we hear you, and we're trying to make things right. Now the real test is coming up with Starfield, their next big game set to drop this fall. It's their shot at redemption, a chance to show they can still put out a killer game. Sure, there's a bit of hope for Starfield, but let's not kid ourselves. The memory of Fallout 76 is still fresh. So I, for one, was extremely skeptical when Howard got on stage last year and said this. And not just this system, but over a hundred systems, over 1,000 planets, all open for you to explore. Gamers are watching closely, hoping Bethesda and Howard have learned from their past mistakes. They want a game that's not just good, but great. A game that meets their expectations and Bethesda's own standards. What we can take away from Howard's story is this. Trust between gamers and developers is fragile. Once it's broken, it's a hell of a job to fix it. Bethesda and Howard now have the daunting task of not just making awesome games, but also rebuilding trust with their player base. Regardless of all the controversy, we can't ignore Howard's influence on the gaming world. However, the next few years are going to be crucial in deciding his legacy. Will he be remembered as a visionary who had a rough patch at one point, or as a symbol of false promises? Only time will tell, and we'll all be waiting to see what happens next. So there you have it, how Todd Howard became the most hated man in gaming for a time. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more RPG videos and commentary. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.